Okay, in this video, continuing with the defensive theme, this is basically the uh, part two, really, on defending a bridge. And that's, you're defending it long term. Now, this really comes into play really noticeable in Korea. For those of you who have never been over there, bridges across the uh, Imjin River they are heavily fortified. I will uh, close in on some of these pictures here to uh, point some stuff out and there's a few things that I personally seen that I could not find pictures of that I will mention also. Uh, I should toss in the shameless plug. If you like what I do, the Patreon channel is listed up at the top. There's also a link to it in the top of the description in the comment section to the videos. Come on over there, kick me a buck or two or five, whatever you so choose. The uh, money gets used to purchase supplies for the militia unit I am in. Primarily expendable supplies along the lines of rations, medical, uh, there's some uh, multi-purpose things like 550 cord, 100 mile an hour tape, that stuff. And then once in a while when I come across a decent buy, I might purchase some ammunition, in particular M193 5.56 millimeter ball rounds. Now back into the video. The South Koreans really control the traffic going across the Imjin River, going north. And pretty much every bridge I've seen has multiple barricades, multiple obstacles on it. These being the most common, these are made out of uh, steel pipe. They're very good size. They are on rollers that they can get moved around on the bridge as needed. These will not stop tanks. They are meant to stop trucks and cars, especially ones of vehicles that could be moving south because they've been captured by North Korean Special Purpose Forces, their version of Special Forces. Those are the most common you will see when you go over there, if you haven't been already. Let's see if we can get a good close-up here for you. They are triangular in shape as you can see. They are heavy-duty steel piping. Those troops are trying to move the barricades into place, they change the patterns every day for how the uh, obstacles are put in across the roadway. Let's see if I can point some stuff out to you now. You can barely see the rollers underneath because of the uh, printouts and stuff, but two people typically can move them. They will be put in in a serpentine pattern on the uh, road. Now, on the friendly side, there's always going to be some type of bunker, some type of guard shack or guard post. That post is fortified against direct fire. So it'll have bulletproof glass. It'll be made out of concrete, covered in sandbags. If it's an older one, it might be made out of uh, stone that is concreted together, but will have been upgraded. There will be multiple firing ports on it. The guards inside are always armed. And they always have a magazine in their weapon. And they always have automatic weapons with belts on them. Behind here you can see some of the other types of barricades you'll come across. You will see some K-rails or concrete barriers which will also be painted. These are put in place and they stay in place. These are the ones that always move around. And then down here, there's better pictures of this farther down. 
these the original ones that I seen which were a long time ago were 55 gallon drums with pieces of rebar or metal rod stuck all the way through and they were sharpened and we'll go over here Another very common thing you will see is hedgehogs, these things. Now, you'll see these sometimes in movies made out of concrete, big concrete beams which are uh, bolted together and that type of stuff. You'll see them made out of uh, railroad track rails, you'll see them made out of I-beams. These particular ones, which are all over in Korea, are made out of angle iron. The ends of them are sharpened. They're not meant to stop a vehicle. They're meant for the vehicle to drive over the top of it. And then as it's, you know, kind of twisting and turning underneath, it's tearing stuff up. It's tearing up the fuel lines, the fuel tank, tearing apart your brake lines, oil lines, all that stuff. The bigger ones that are made out of your... Uh, railroad track out of your I-beams those are meant to slow and stop wheeled vehicles they won't necessarily do it anymore to tanks during World War II it could but newer ones no it won't they'll just uh, push them out of the side or crush them and then as you can see here those rolling barricades are lined up in the center right now Now we'll move down and over. Here's one of those round barrel type obstacles. Same thing, it's meant for a truck to drive over the top of it and it will essentially chew up everything underneath. If a car hits it, it will puncture the uh, radiator very, very easily. And if you can see in the picture what it looks like you can along the sides of the bridge and the roads leading in, you will see chain link fencing, heavy duty fence posts topped with concertina wire. These obstacles typically are stacked off on the side. They only get pulled out quickly to block off the uh, traffic way when it's absolutely needed. Now we'll move over. As you can see, one of the guard shacks made out of concrete, bulletproof glass. Typically you'll have the uh, bigger, heavier duty ones will be located on the sides. In this picture here, this i seen a lot, these are um, metal plates because they're uh, fairly thick and then they are studded with uh, pieces of sharpened rebar, pieces of sharpened metal rods. Those are for getting uh, laid out in a traffic way right in front of a vehicle to drive over the top. Those are basically your uh, spike strips on steroids. I have seen some of these that were chained together with a rope going across the road in a little channel. You drove over the top of that so you weren't damaging the rope and that stuff. But if someone was coming through at a high rate of speed, you'll see a couple soldiers jump out, grab that rope, and they'll pull it across the traffic way. Then they'll jump back inside their uh, guard shack. These obviously you don't want to step on them too because it, it will for sure go through your boot, through your foot, but they're designed to completely tear up your tires. These things are about, uh, about a meter in length. They were typically about a, between a foot to two foot wide. And they had the uh, metal spikes sticking through them every few inches. Now another obstacle that I've seen 
that they do not have a very good picture of. This might be part of it here. Little shacks in the middle of the bridges and the, on the enemy side. You had this uh, building set off on the side, not very big. It clearly is not a position. When you went past a couple times, I was able to get a look inside. They had another barricade that was inside there, which I'm guessing would be hydraulic or electric motor driven. The friendly side would hit a uh, button inside the guard post and the super thick gates would uh, come flying across the road, closing off together on the inside of the uh, bridge <coughs> or all the way across depending on the size of the bridge. Uh, the steel on them was uh, fairly thick. I can't remember if it was round stock or square stock. It was a fairly good cage. A tank would be able to push its way through, but it might take one or two tries. They're, they're pretty substantial. Basically, they're uh, accordion-like. They just extend all the way across the bridge and you get an instant obstacle. And then that allows time for the guards to come out and roll in the other barricades to uh, slow the enemy further keeping them on the bridge in that giant fatal funnel as long as possible for the defenders to get fires in on them and I know for a fact that every bridge across the Imjin River is permanently wired with explosives they do go through and they inspect the explosives every so often to make sure stuff does not aggrade degrade. They check the firing circuits and all that stuff also. Rumor has it they are controlled at nearby positions, the explosives on the bridge, and there's also supposed to be a master switch or a master control panel down in Seoul at the uh, com Combined Force Command Headquarters, if not the uh, Republic of Korea Defense Headquarters that they can uh, hit that switch and they can detonate all the bridges at the same time. So these are examples of defending a bridge long term. This allows the passage of friendly civilians, friendly troops and equipment at all times, keeps it under continuous observation, and it can, can quickly be closed if the enemy is moving in that direction. Now I have, I do know, well I can go into it because it's been a while. I do know that uh, there is, at least in Korea, scatterable mine packets that are designated for use either on the bridges or next to the bridges. The ones on the bridge would probably be artillery delivered. The ones next to the bridge on uh, potential fording sites and landing sites, those were uh, vehicle driven, but I'm sure we had artillery backups. There is typically armor units, or at least anti-armor units, nearby the bridges, so that if something happens, those tanks can roll right up on the bridge, get in position, and they can put, you know, a couple tanks, whatever's needed, side by side by side, going across the front of the bridge, that they can close it off. Barring that, there will be vehicle positions near the bridge overlooking it that they can pull in with jeeps with tow missiles or recoilless if they still have it, but they should have them all replaced with uh, tows by now. So, another way for defending a bridge. Now for all my engineer brothers and the Patriot and Militia movements, always remember, essay